Warren Buffett once said that the chains of habit are too light to be felt until they are too heavy to be broken. I'm Terrell Higgins, and I was able to attain millionaire status in my mid-30s using a combination of real estate and stock investing. And today we're gonna be diving into five different wealth killers that are keeping you broke. Let's get into it. So this one might surprise you. If you get married to the wrong person, it can obliterate your finances and it can prevent you from building any wealth at all. 41% of marriages end in divorce with the most commonly cited reasons being a lack of commitment, constant arguing, or infidelity. But that's not all. Your second marriage, there's a 60% chance of getting divorced. And if you have a third marriage, you have a 73% chance of getting divorced. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. And if you need examples of how destructive divorce can be to your finances, look at some of the celebrities that have gotten divorced. So when Mel Gibson got divorced from his wife, Robin Denise Moore, he lost half of his fortune, which was $425 million. And when Bill Gates got divorced from Melinda, he lost $76 billion. Michael Jordan, $168 million. Tiger Woods, $100 million and an additional $50 million in endorsement money. Madonna, when she got divorced from Guy Ritchie, $92 million. And the list goes on and on and on. Divorces can be so financially devastating because they force you to sell assets, split retirement funds, pay alimony, child support, and legal fees. And you incur so many financial costs that you were not accounting for. A simple $200 prenup could eliminate this nightmare to your finances, but only 10% of marriages actually have one in place. And I get it, no one wants to think about the end at the beginning of their relationship, but it's definitely something you might want to consider. So choosing the right partner in life could be the biggest financial investment you ever make in your entire life. And let me know in the comments below if you've ever considered marriage and its impact on your financial goals. So number two is car payments, and they are a silent killer. Too many people tie their identity to the vehicle that they're driving. But the harsh reality is, is that cars depreciate in value the second you drive them off the lot you're losing between 10 to 15 percent of the value. The average monthly new car payment is $734. And if you factor in insurance, registration, maintenance, gas, your annual cost for a vehicle is $12,182. That's money that can make a big difference in your future investments. So the smart move is to buy a vehicle that is three to four years old with about 30,000 miles on it. So someone else has absorbed that cost from the steepest portion of the depreciation curve. You don't want to be upgrading your vehicle every two to three years, and you want to keep driving this vehicle until the maintenance costs start to outweigh the actual value of the vehicle itself. And if you guys are getting value out of my video today, please hit that like button, subscribe, and share the video with someone else so it can grow the channel and we can get this message to more and more people. So number three is high interest rate debt. So nearly 46% of US households are carrying a credit card balance. And with interest rates the way that they are, the current average rate on a credit card is 22.63%. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the fuck? So no wonder people are feeling trapped. 
If you are making the minimum payments with the interest rate that high, it's going to take years and potentially decades to dig out from that debt. So the solution is to pay off your credit cards in full every single month. And if you can't do that, you might consider eliminating credit card usage from your monthly spending altogether. And you want to focus in on paying down that high interest rate debt as quickly as possible. I know when I started my financial journey, I did not have the discipline to use a credit card. So I didn't. So number four is sitting on the sidelines. So the fear of market downturns keeps people on the sidelines waiting for that perfect opportunity to invest. But here's the deal. Sitting on the sidelines is going to cost you more money than just staying invested in the market. So if we look at this graph from Fidelity, even with 14 different market pullbacks, if you kept $10,000 invested in the S&P 500 from the 1980s till now, you are a millionaire. So Kenneth Fisher was right. Time in the market always beats timing the market. If you just missed out on the five best trading days between 1988 and 2023, you would miss out on 37% of your gains across that time frame. And if you miss the top 30 days of trading across that time frame, you would miss out on 80 percent of the gains across that time frame. So you do not want to time the market. You just want more time in the market. You build wealth by investing in assets that grow over time. Real estate, the stock market, businesses. It's not flashy. It's quiet. You would never know people own these things. And that is what's going to build your wealth. People who truly have a ton of money are not driving these flashy luxury vehicles and living in large mansions. They live modest lives, invest wisely, and let time do all the work. Meanwhile, those Instagram millionaires that you see with those dream lives have no idea what they're doing with their money, and they're living paycheck to paycheck just like everyone else. You wanna focus in on financial security. Stop trying to impress people that you don't know and you don't like by buying things that you can't afford. The peace of mind that you get from being financially secure and no longer living paycheck to paycheck will vastly outweigh any surface level compliments that you will get owning luxury items. You really need to be thinking about your long-term financial goals. And if you're curious how you could plan a rock solid retirement, I actually have an entire video on that topic. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you next time. Future at all. <laughs> Bro, you cannot stay here for this video. You're too wild. You're way too wild. You're gonna have to go.